Morning everyone, James Reeves with TFB TV. Today on TFB TV, we have a review of the new-ish Bushmaster Bravo Zulu, which stands for Bushmaster Big Zaddy, AKA my nickname after I turned 35. I'm gonna say this review is a cautiously optimistic one, and that'll become more clear as the review progresses. More or less, both the reviews of and my personal experience with the BZ have been positive, but light. I've only put about a half case or maybe less through this gun, and I've only seen about a handful of reviews on it, but so far, so good. Even a search on AR15.com yields nothing about the Bravo Zulu, which really raises the gun zen question if it's a rifle and no one is senselessly bitching about it on ARFCOM. Is it really an AR15? My first AR-15 was indeed a Bushmaster, but bear in mind this was almost 20 years ago. Back then, AR-15s were a lot less complicated. There was even a saying, mind your ABCs if you want a good AR-15, meaning Armalite Bushmaster Colt. I've been a cultured AR-15 enjoyer for a long time, but nowadays even I lose track of what's good and what's not just because the market's so flooded. I'd even bet that there are more AR-15 manufacturers as we sit here today than even 1911 manufacturers. Now some of you old f**ks out there, you might remember something called the chart. It was a running Excel spreadsheet online. It had like a column of all the characteristics that a mil-spec AR-15 should have. And then there was a row where AR-15s were listed, like different makes and models. You could kind of go down the chart and you could determine whether a particular AR-15 you were looking at had components and quality control procedures that were on par with or superior to a mil-spec AR-15. Of course, mil-spec, we mean military specification or the specs that the U.S. military issued M16s would have. At that time, Colt was military issue and the 6920 was the closest thing to a real M4. It also cost about 1200 bucks even 20 years ago. Per government contract, it had to have certain qualities like a bolt made out of Carpenter 158 steel, 4150 chrome molly barrels that were chrome lined, so on and so forth. Cheaper manufacturers would skimp on these components using lower grade steel or they would just cut QC methods like high pressure testing and magnetically inspecting bolts and barrels, which Colt would in fact perform. The chart eventually vanished and I surmise that's because the market just got too crowded and too volatile. Too many AR models, too many manufacturers to keep track of, and on top of that, manufacturers would change spec, change ownership on a semi-regular basis. Bushmaster perfect example. Bushmaster went from whatever it was originally when it was awesome to becoming, I guess, part of a conglomerate called Freedom Group, which some say negatively impacted the quality of Bushmaster firearms. Then Bushmaster faced a tremendous amount of liability because some activist Yankee judge created a loophole in the PLCAA, which is a federal act intended to protect manufacturers when their firearms are used by criminals. This put them under. Eventually, Bushmaster passed hands to Franklin Armory. I've always appreciated Franklin Armory as a company, but I consider them to be more of like an ATF troll manufacturer than like an actual manufacturer of duty-grade firearms. Franklin Armory is probably best known for the binary trigger, which is a trigger that fires both when the trigger is pulled and when it's released, which I believe they created solely to with the ATF. When Franklin Armory purchased Bushmaster, I just assumed that Franklin was going to ride on the coattails of a once great name in the AR community with arguably the dopest role mark in the game, get f***ed my little pony owners, and they were going to sell like commercial grade ARs that were going to be overpriced. But instead of relying on just my assumptions, at SHOT Show 2022, I requested Bushmaster's flagship AR-15, the Bravo Zulu, for myself so I could take it apart poke it, prod it, run it, oh yeah. And I also wanted to take group measurements at 100 yards. So, is the Bravo Zulu a legit fighting or duty AR or just some commercial grade Bravo Sierra? By the way, all of us today are super privileged to have two total bros and real life heroes help me out with this review. Some of you may remember Jacques Ballet, the most humble army ranger you'll ever meet. He's been on the program for years now, as well as Joey Reese, a seasoned detective at the Tangipo Sheriff's Office. Suffice it to say, I had adequate assistance with this review in addition to myself and Ryan, and we're both big AR nerds. The Bravo Zulu has an MSRP of a little over 1100 bucks but I could find it for under $950 actually when it first came out. 
I don't know if it's a supply chain deal or if this thing is just that popular, but everywhere is now selling them for pretty close to MSRP. And Bushmaster says that if you order one from them, you have up to a four week lead time. The BZ is like an upgraded and modernized version of the old faithful Bushmaster Patrolman's carbine. If memory serves, the original, like mine, had an M4 profile 16 inch barrel, a one in nine twist with a carbine length gas system. However, AR-15s, as they became more popular, civilian shooters realized that many commercial spec ARs were just getting it wrong. The M4 profile barrel looked cool, like a real M4, so of course everyone wanted it without realizing it actually wasn't a great idea. M4 barrels have a lot of material lathed out of the middle of the barrel to support an M203 grenade launcher, which, sad to say, not many of us own. It's also got a thinner profile between the gas block and the chamber and a thicker profile towards the muzzle, which is the opposite of what you want. There's more heat at the ass end of the barrel here than the muzzle between the gas block and the chamber. That's where you want more material. After the gas block, then you can kind of taper down to the muzzle to save some weight without drastically affecting performance or accuracy. Expert barrel makers like Clint Hansen of Ballistic Advantage, they've introduced newer profiles that have more steel in the chamber and gas block here area with a gradual taper from front to back, making the barrels light but also sturdy and accurate. We're also seeing more 1 in 8 twist rate barrels instead of 1 in 7, which is optimized for heavier 5.56 bullets, or 1 in 9, which work better for lighter bullets. As I said before, 1 in 8 is, in my opinion, the GigaChad Goldilocks solution, stabilizing everything from 50 grain to 77 grain. M4 carbines also use carbine length gas systems. No one changed this when civilian legal 16 inch AR 15s first started showing up. Now, this led to over gassing or too much gas getting back into the gun too soon, which means that you'd have more felt recoil and there'd be more wear and tear in your gun. Someone eventually figured out, like 10, 15 years ago, that the mid length gas system was ideal for a 16 16 inch barrel. The Bravo Zulu fixed literally all of this. It's a 16 inch 1 and 8 twist barrel with a mid length gas system and a straight barrel profile that's beefed up at the chamber and gas block areas. Whoever picked this barrel out knew what he or she was doing. It is 2022 after all. And it also appears to be nitrided, but I'm not sure about that. That is, I don't know if this is just a regular chrome line barrel or nitrided, but it certainly looks nitrided. And if the exterior is nitrided, then the bore almost certainly is. While chrome lining is mil spec, prevailing opinion nowadays is that the non-additive nitriding process is superior to chrome for accuracy and corrosion resistance. I don't know if the barrel's 4150 or inferior 4140 steel, but if they went through all this trouble to get everything else right, I would be really pissed if they went 4140 on us. The barrel is capped off with Bushmaster's Snake Charmer brake, which seems to work pretty well at keeping recoil flat. I mean, these days suppressors are more common and there's a wide open muzzle device market, so most shooters are going to be inclined to kind of select their own brand of muzzle device anyways. So I'm not sure if it's necessary to package a big box AR with anything other than an A2 flash hider, but even so, the Snake Charmer works pretty well and it's superior to a standard A2, at least as far as controlling recoil is concerned. The bolt itself is indeed shot peened 158 Carpenter, which is mil spec, and it's also marked as being high pressure tested and magnetic particle inspected. What that more or less means is that they fire an overpressure proof load through this gun, and then they perform a magnetic inspection of the bolt for any potential damage or issues that might come up. It's like the four-way stop of AR-15s. Only the strong will advance. It's a quality control measure. The bolt carrier is an M16 cut bolt carrier, which means it's compatible with full auto fire control groups, and it adds a little bit of weight to the rear of the bolt carrier group. More importantly, the bolt carrier group is nitrided and not phosphated. Phosphating is mil spec, and it does a good job of actually soaking up lube, resisting corrosion, but when it's dry, it's not nearly as slick as chrome or nitride, so in theory, you're more likely to have a failure to feed to extract with a phosphate bolt carrier group that's been unlubricated than, say, a similarly raw dog nitrided bolt carrier group. Also, as I mentioned in the CDR video, chromed or nitrated bolt carrier groups can be really easy to clean. Phosphate, on the other hand, I compare it to wiping with one ply. You can wipe and wipe and wipe and wipe, and it's still gonna be dirty. Oh, and the gas key, which can be a failure point, 
appears to be properly, if not lightly, staked to the carrier. By all indications, this appears to be a high-quality bolt carrier group that meets or exceeds military specifications. The furniture seems fine. It's by a company I've never heard of, Thrill. Aesthetically, you be the judge, but I wouldn't call it ugly. The rear stock has two sling swivel QD sockets on either side, which is nice. The grip looks a little bit like the BCM Gunfighter series, which is actually a cringier name than Thrill. At the end of the day, they work well as a plastic knob that you grip onto so you don't drop the gun in a plastic stick that you shove into your shoulder to quell the stunning recoil of 5.56. The furniture's fine. The castle nut's not staked, but this rarely bothers me because it's easy enough to do yourself if you don't want to remove your buffer tube for any reason in the future. The whole gun weighs 6.2 pounds. It's pretty lightweight considering all the features it has, in spite of using a heavy muzzle brake and a full length free float rail, not to mention that straight barrel profile I talked about. Finally, another surprising feature is that Bushmaster includes a two stage, four pound trigger with this gun, the DM2S two stage trigger. It breaks pretty consistently between four and four and a quarter pounds. I'm really happy with this upgrade for what it's worth. If you're one of those in a woods, I like to blast mounds of trash in between my online college courses type of guys. Note that you can pay an extra 100 or 200 bucks for an upgrade and get the Franklin Armory binary trigger from the factory. Sounds like a waste of money to me, but by God, while I might pick on you for having one, I'll never kink shame anybody about gun purchases because it's your right to do what you want and there's nothing wrong with getting something just because you think it's fun, even if it's super dumb. So just go on, you fiscally irresponsible king, you. We brought the baby zygote to the range with our four decent trigger pullers and no one had a bad thing to say about the BZ. We ran about a half case of ammo through it. We had no failures, no issues, in spite of not cleaning it or lubricating it before we took it to the range. It handled barricade drills very well, easy to handle. The trigger pull was fantastic as mentioned and the brake kept the loud end of the stick parallel with the ground. We also did some accuracy testing with a magnified optic from a bag at 100 yards. We ran 50 grain American Eagle Varmint and Predator. We ran standard 55 grain M193. And then we ran 73 grain Federal Burger Match. 50 grain, this is the 50 grain Federal, about 1.6 minus 0.224, so you know, like 1.3 something. This rifle really seems to like that 50 grand. That's another 1.6. So these are two of like the exact same size groups. Wolf Gold M193, 55 grain. I mean, it's basically like 2.25. Um, and then of course that's minus 0.224 for the circumference of the rounds. But the 73 grain Federal Match, the best group we shot was 2.1 inch minus 0.224. Gets you at, you know, 1.8 ish, 1.9 MOA, which is really also, I think, really good for a service grade AR. I consider some auto rifles that can produce better than two inch groups at 100 yards from a bag to be excellent in terms of accuracy, and the Bushmaster was consistently accurate. The best groups were tighter than 1.4 inches with the 50 grain ammo, and the worst groups were the Wolf Gold 55 grain M193 that were still tighter than two inches. That's the benefit of this heavier profile barrel. It's gonna be much more rigid, giving you better accuracy, and it's gonna be less effective by the barrel getting hot. We were very impressed with the Bushmaster's performance from a bag at 100 yards. Other than the unknown barrel specs, there's not a lot of negatives about this gun. This gun's absolutely brimming with features. It's an upgraded Patrolman's carbine, but really it shares almost no features with the original Patrolman's carbine, except for one that's kind of interesting. So I picture the Bushmaster engineers, they're just sitting around the lab, vibing, putting together this new Patrolman's carbine. They're putting the muzzle brake on there. Great new barrel, awesome trigger, free float handguard. They're really upgrading this thing. And then all of a sudden, one of the engineers, it's like his phone starts ringing and his ringtone is it's five o'clock somewhere. Everybody gets quiet and they kind of look around, they shrug and they're like, you're right, it is five o'clock somewhere. So they all collectively get up. They load up the Dodge Caravan and they head straight to Twin Peaks. And I wonder how many signature 22 ounce draft beers the boys got into before they realized they completely forgot 
about the charging handle. The Bravo Zulu has a plain old charging handle. All these features and a plain old charging handle. Not that there's anything wrong with that. The USGI charging handle, I guess, is just fine. It's just funny that they change every feature of this gun and a super cheap upgrade would be a charging handle. Now second, and this kind of also falls into the unknown category, I don't know who makes these aluminum handguards. I don't know if it's Bushmaster or someone else. And it seems like I'm seeing more and more of this style of aluminum clamp-on handguards where you have these screws beneath the barrel nut and plenty of M-lock, right? And it's thin, great ergos and everything. But you can find these handguards for less than 100 bucks or like less than 150 from a quality manufacturer. For all I know, these are the toughest handguards in the world. I'm just saying that generally clamp-on handguards aren't. And if they're just held in with two tension screws and they're not screwed into the barrel nut, they're not going to be as secure as a handguard that screws directly into the barrel nut or like a flange in the upper. Is it likely you'll ever subject the Bravo Zulu to this type of abuse where it'll F up the handguard? Probably not. And you do have a couple of QD sling mounting points, plenty of M lock all over the place, which is really nice. But I think I ought to mention that this was like a business casual meeting. We did knock the gun around a little bit in the barricade. We shot about 500 rounds through it over a couple of hours. Like nothing really bad, like a carbine course or a weekend in Detroit. Bushmaster's new slogan is proven. It's ambitious considering this is basically a company starting from scratch. Hardly proven, but I do applaud their philosophy. Again, I searched. I haven't seen any reviews from trustworthy sources on the Bravo Zulu. I couldn't even find like forum posts about it from owners and early adopters. So it's not quite proven yet, but it does look really good on paper. And my experience with it thus far has been great. So to conclude, the Bravo Zulu meets or exceeds military specifications in all of its critical operating components. Ignore that this gun's made by new Bushmaster and just ask yourself, is a better than mil-spec rifle worth $900? Definitely. Is it worth $1,000? Forget about who makes it. Mil-spec rifle, $1,000? Probably. It's hard to find a true mil-spec gun for under a grand right now. Okay, what about $1,100? For a mil-spec rifle with bonuses like a nitrided bolt carrier group, one and eight twist barrel that can do better than one and a half MOA with cheap off-the-shelf ammo, a two-stage trigger, free float handguard. If the barrel's 4150 steel and nitrated, yeah, sure, I'd say definitely, even if the handguard and the charging handle are basic bitch. But the market certainly seems to think this is an $1,100 rifle after all, because Bushmaster is on a four-week back order and everyone's selling this thing pretty close to MSRP. Yeah, it's not quite proven as their new motto presupposes, but it is pretty, pretty, pretty good for an AR-15. I think it's gonna do very well with commercial buyers who just wanna buy a loaded up AR-15 without having to screw with anything. Now, if it were up to me, I would love to buy like a reduced cost version that didn't have the clamp on handguard, didn't have the muzzle brake just like factory handguards and like an A2 muzzle brake, just so I could put my own. And if that was priced at less than $900, oh my God, it would be an absolute steal. So I'd buy that reduced cost version. I'd pick up my own handguard, throw a chemo brake on there so I can use my dead air cans, get this sweet ass Blue Force Gear Woodland Camo limited edition sling, toss an optic on there and be good to go. Even if you have no interest in the Bravo Zulu, I hope this video at least gave you a little bit of info as to what you want to look for in an AR-15. And if you want to pick up a good AR-15 from a company with great customer service, look no further than Top Gun Supply, my friends. And all of the ammo that we shot through the Bravo Zulu at the range was provided by Ventura Munitions, the best ammo store literally on the planet. But you guys are the best viewers in the entire universe. Thank you. Take care.